This is the Depstech Wi-Fi Endoscope, or Boroscope, currently available on Amazon for dirt cheap at less than £30. With such a low price, can it be any good? Let's find out. Now, first of all, let's get one thing straight. This is not an endoscope. This is a boroscope. OK, let's get a bit pedantic just for a second. According to Wikipedia, a boroscope is an optical device consisting of a rigid or flexible tube with an eyepiece or display at one end. An objective lens or camera or the other linked together by an optical or electrical system in between. An endoscope, however, is a subclassification of boroscopes used quite specifically in medical procedures within the human body. Now, don't get me wrong, this is a lovely piece of electronics and well made for the money, but there's no part of this device that I'd like to have shoved into any orifice of my body, thank you very much. Depstech appears to be yet another Chinese company producing OK hardware at ludicrously low prices and flooding the Western market with whatever they can sell, complete with dodgy website and strange taglines such as Depstech, persistent in pursuing the perfect creation, we're the creator. This particular boroscope is one of a number within the range that Depstech currently sell. I've got here the WF010-020 model here, with a 3.5 meter long lance or cable or wire or whatever it's called, effectively determining its range. OK, so what's in the box? There's not much to say about the box other than it's blue. We have inside the boroscope itself, complete with a couple of nice Velcro ties to keep it all together, a USB-A to micro USB connector for charging, a micro USB to micro USB cable to connect directly to a phone instead of using Wi-Fi, a little pot with a collection of cool little accessories, a user manual, and a happy, not happy card. OK, how does it feel? The main boroscope itself feels reasonably well made. The lance is stiff but flexible. The camera end feels well made, if not slightly larger than I was expecting. And the electronics end, to be fair, does feel a little bit cheap. But I'm sure that won't make any difference to its actual operation, unless you intend to stand on it on a regular basis or something. Or indeed, as the safety instructions point out, this is not intended to be used as a hammer. <laughs> Useful advice there, Depstech, thank you. The cables also feel a bit on the cheap side, but let's face it, this is not meant to be some high-performance charging cable, it's merely an accessory to the main event. The instructions were reasonably clear, well laid out and mostly intelligible. But don't worry though, there's still a reasonable level of weird translations going on there just to keep you entertained. In order to attach the accessories, you simply need to unscrew the bezel that's already on the lens, and then screw on whichever tool you need. You have a mirror, which is reasonably neat. The only way you can tell you're using the mirror from the video is everything is reversed. There's a magnet. While it's certainly good enough to pick up screws that you might have dropped, I'm not entirely sure how you'd use the camera with the magnet on, as it obstructs the view. There's a hook for pulling through cables and such like through cavities. and there's a reset clip for resetting. Also on the device is a basic binary slider for turning the device on and off, and a wheel for turning the lights on and off and for varying the brightness. The lights are bright, if not a little too blue, and are perfectly capable of lighting up small areas that come within range of the camera. The instructions indicate that this boroscope will work with both iOS and Android devices, but for the purposes of this review, I'm using an Android phone. First of all, you need to plug in the boroscope to charge it using the micro USB cable supplied. While it's charging, go over to the Android Play Store and search for Depstech. In my case, the application was called Depstech Wi-Fi. Now you have your device charged and the app installed, you'll need to turn on the boroscope. On the phone, you'll need to connect to the new Jetion Wi-Fi network. The default password listed on the instructions leaflet in my case was 12345678. It's probably worth noting here that since this is using Wi-Fi to connect to the boroscope, you won't have any internet access while you're using it. Open up the new app that's appeared, 
accept the new permissions and you're away. The interface to the system is perfectly functional and easy to use with buttons for photo, video, folders and settings, each of which is quite obvious as to what it does. On the settings screen you can change the Wi-Fi name, the password, change which side of the screen the menu appears on, and you can change the resolution. Now there is a discrepancy between the resolutions displayed here and the actual video output, but more of that detail is available on the website. Ok, so here are a few videos shot with the boroscope. The first one is using the mirror attachment. And now without any accessories. As you can see, the output really isn't that shabby. The focus is fixed at around 5 to 6 centimeters. This final bit of footage was done at the lower resolution of 640x480 and it was using the light so you can see the darkest recesses of one of my speakers. And that pretty much wraps it up. A surprisingly competent bit of kit for the money. I've left links to the device in the description below. If you have any comments please leave them below and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching.